live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving and storage studio, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. I'm your host, Jade Warshaw, and I'm joined today by my friend, Rachel Cruz. So good to be here with you, Jay. It's great. It's so good. We're taking your calls today. We're talking about your life, your money. Hey, we're both moms. So if we have any moms that want to call in uh, with any questions, the number is 888-825-5225. We're here for you, America. All right, let's go to the phone lines. We got Benjamin in San Antonio, Texas. What's going on, Benjamin? Hey, so uh, my wife and I, uh, we are... We just started baby step two, and we are also expecting our first baby. Ooh, and congratulations. Yes, Yay, thank so you. fun. And that's in two months. So the question is, you know, um, my job, I make pretty good money, but I don't make it. I'm a chauffeur, and so I'm not exactly an independent contractor, but I don't get vacation, and I don't get any kind of pay time off. Okay. So the question is, when the baby comes, I wonder to take a week off to help with the wife, because those first, time, first kid and... Any kind of complications, we don't know what's going to happen. Right. And that'd be good point. Um, but in order to take a week off, I have to set aside enough money to cover the income I'm going to lose, mm-hmm. which basically means pausing that debt snowball for the next six to eight weeks, up to, you know, depending on, because my income changes every month, depending on commissions, you know, what mm-hmm. I get. But so the question is, is that a good idea? Yeah. I mean, when it comes to the baby steps, when it comes to the debt snowball, we do, you know, recommend pausing until baby comes. We call that stork mode. And it's kind of just making sure we have as much money saved up as possible. Right, Rachel, for anything that might happen with the baby. I mean, God willing, your baby's going to come. It's going to be healthy, beautiful, everything perfect. But it is nice to have that money saved up um, for anything that might come up with hospital charges. And in this case, if you need to stay home for an extra week or whatever that time is, now is the time for you guys to start stacking that money up. And so if you're pausing the debt snowball or pausing whatever baby step that you're on for that time, that's totally fine. Yeah, absolutely. And Benjamin, we would recommend that for you guys to pause that even if you weren't taking time off work or even if you were on a salary still making money. Um, So yeah, for anyone listening, that's exactly right. We pause the debt snowball, save up cash while you're waiting on baby. Once baby and mom comes home, that's great. Press play, use all that money that's saved if you you didn't need it and throw it at the debt. So for your your case, Benjamin, then that's great. I would set aside a specific amount of money um, for that week since you're going to take that off and you guys kind of plan around that. But uh, yeah, you're doing it exactly right. How does that sound, Benjamin? Okay. That, that sounds that sounds good. <laughs> awesome. Congratulations. Hope very, everything goes well. Very, very cool. That's a really good call out, Rachel. I think a lot of times people forget that, oh, like when that's happening, you can pause and take that quick break. Yeah. And we say that too, even with big life changes, right? If you're, if you know you're going to be relocating uh, or moving jobs and it's like, yeah, we need some to have some cash for yes. moving expenses, right? If you know that there's a big life change coming, mm-hmm. that is a time that we say, hey, if you need a pause, save up some money. And even for cars, you know, we, we yes. talk to people and their car breaks down. It's not worth anything. It, it's, you know, they, they have to pay more to get it fixed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so they're like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Then we're yeah. like, okay, pause and make sure those four walls are covered. So, so yes. again, the gazelle intensity is so important, but also planning for those big life events that are going to happen through the baby step process. Even health. Yes. Health. If yep. something comes up with your major, right. you know, major illness, you're not able to work. So it's really good to call out those times where it is uh, all right. We're not going to yell at you. As a matter <laughs> of fact, we're going to cheer you on if you do uh, pause the baby steps. Let's take another call. We've got Devon. Am I saying that right? Devon in Jacksonville? That's uh, Devin. Devin. You know, I had to put a little swag on it, Devin. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> How can I we was help you? Too. <laughs> Devon. It's just Devin. How can we help you, Jay? <laughs> How can we help all right. you? So, uh, so I'm in the uh, military, and I just got orders uh, to go out across the country to Washington State. Oh, and wow. my orders right now will keep me there for at least two and a half years. Um, and uh, my wife and I are wondering if it's uh, kind of what's a break even or the worth it to uh, rent versus buy a house. Mm. Yeah, it's a great question. Well, first, thanks for your service um, for you thank and you. your wife, because that's a that's a huge sacrifice. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, if you're relocating, especially people in the military that are moving so much, we don't recommend buying. So renting is great because 
what you know the, as we experience right now and even in the last 18 24 months how crazy real estate has been the market has been so mm -hmm. those ups and downs are still we're still feeling that and so we don't want you caught up buying high and then if something happens and you're god you have to sell for less or you know whatever it is so 5 years or more is where i feel comfortable with someone purchasing a home and being in it uh, it's enough time to kind of ride the market. But if you're going to just be there two and a half years, uh, Devin, yeah, I would. I would just rent. I would, too. What do you okay. think about that, Devin? How does that how does that hit you? So I've, we bought a house uh, here in Jacksonville and we've been in it for just over five years and we got it paid off, fully paid off. Ooh, uh, wow. Congrats. And everything. So Congratulations. That's kind of thank you. That's kind of where we were at. Um, that's kind of uh what we were thinking is, you know, you buy the house and if you, I mean, you can break even on it and then you're still money ahead of renting because renting is kind of like a 100% interest loan, in my opinion. Yeah, I understand. But also, it, you know, buying a home, it's the, one of the largest assets that majority of people buy. And so I want you to just be thinking through to make sure, okay, are we going to get out better on the other end? And again, it's just it's just the fact that the time frame is so short uh, is where is where that comes into play. Are, will you guys be moving back to Jacksonville after you go to Washington, do you there's think? A, there's a really good chance uh, that I could because the community that I'm in is kind of based out of there, but mm -hmm. there's no guarantees. Okay, okay. Well, with that paid off home that you have, I mean, when it's time to move, if you guys sell it, you can keep that money, high interest savings account, and just continue to grow that nest egg. And then when you get someplace stable, you're going to have a lot of money to work with and probably be able to buy something again totally in cash. I mean, that's exciting to me. What do you think about that? Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Devin. Thanks for your call. You know, that's a really good point. Um, a lot of people, you know, they're not really sure what the parameters are around saving up for a house. And then how long do you keep the house? And if you're moving, should you sell the house or can you rent out the house? I feel like that's a really good talking yes, point here. Yes, we talk about that a lot. Um, yeah, we never recommend being a long distance landlord. Oh, gosh, that sounds like the worst. <laughs> I know. It's a it's a, it's a a headache. I mean, it really is. And so for some people, um, Devin didn't say this, but in his case, you know, we've heard things like this of like, OK, I'll keep my house. Yeah. Rent it out. And all of it, and it ends up, it just ends up being a mess. I mean, and how so, can you oversee that? If you're, I mean, he's literally across the country, and not saying that he was going to do this, yeah. but a lot of people might think, oh, I'm coming back to the house later. Let's rent it out. But you really can't manage your property from across the country. No, yeah, you'd be probably paying a property manager and all of it. And it's just, it's just the hassle. And so we always say, yeah, just kind of have that clean slate. And then you'll have the cash. That's right. Uh, from the equity, if it's not fully paid off or all of it, if, if it is paid off. And that's your money. And you may make a different decision with that amount of money. You know, that's if, you, right. if you had it and to say, hey, Jade, would you go buy this, go buy a house in Oklahoma City with this money right now? Absolutely and you're like, not. Nope, probably not. So that's how you have to think about it too. Yeah, it's exciting. He can keep that money. If he's going to keep it more than five years, he could invest it for a while and let it grow any more, uh, even more. If he's planning on using it for less than five years, then he should keep it in a high yield savings account. So that's what we would do. This is The Ramsey Show. We've been doing business at Ramsey for more than 30 years. By now, we're a well-oiled machine, but it wasn't always that way. Yes, we've always had a vision, always had determination, and a drive to help people, but what we didn't have was one central place to access all our numbers so that we could get further ahead or quickly see when we needed to pivot. We were always jumping back and forth between different systems and spreadsheets. So when NetSuite by Oracle helped us wrangle our revenue, inventory, expenses, and more into one place, it was a game changer. And NetSuite's number one cloud financial system can help your business gain the same visibility because businesses thrive on timely data. And NetSuite's real-time analytics can help your business have immediate access to your numbers daily so you always know where you stand and you can move quickly. So go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey today and set up a free product tour. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey.
You're listening to The Ramsey Show. Hey, give us a call today. The number is 888-825-5225. We'll take questions about whatever it is you guys want to talk about. We will talk about that on the air live with you. So we're going to take a call now. We're going to go to John in McClellan, Texas. What's going on, John? McClellan, Texas. Hi. Hi. Um, so my question is, so I'm basically, I'm kind of all over the place here. Um, so I have, I'm almost done paying off my credit card debt because I'm, I'm 22. So I just got my credit cards. I have like a $200 debt. So I'm going to pay that down. Okay. And actually a lot of that's going to be returned because I returned some items. So I was just wondering, and I have 200 in savings, but I was just wondering like, where do I go from here? Like to just really build, like to build upon that. And like, when do I start investing? And I actually had investments, but I sold them because I figured get an emergency fund first before I invest any smart you know, at all. So, just where do I go from here? And also, I am on SSI, so just so you know, I can't really save in a savings account because if I save too much in a savings account, they'll take that away and I'll lose my health insurance. So, what do I, you know, what do I do? And I do make well nineteen thousand three hundred twenty-one a year. And um, my jobs are like through cohorts, so I'm not actually employed by the company, but I get paid through Texas Workforce, so it's like a program. So that's okay. kind of like my uh, uh, financial stuff. So if you could just help me lead me in the right direction. Cool, cool. So let's go back to this debt real quick. So the is the only debt that 200 in credit cards, or is there more? Um. Well, no. Well, I owe so it's 216 in credit cards, and then 148 to just. Uh, so it's just a, a friend of mine. Okay, so, so 348 said, total? Yes, but uh, but as I mentioned, 133 of the credit card debt's going to go off because I made a return. So okay, that's great. So it'll be like $80 in credit card debt. Okay, great. That's so, great, John. I mean, is there? Is, and there's no car loans, no student loans, no um, no, no anything. No, okay. no, no, no. I live at I live at home. All those all those things. Yeah. Very good. Well, you're in a you're in a great spot, John. I feel very encouraged by this because you're going to be able to take care of this debt really quickly um, because that is what we, we talk about getting a thousand dollar emergency fund. Do you have any savings besides the two hundred dollars? Because you said you cashed out some investments. No, no, no other savings besides two hundred about to be three hundred dollars here soon. But yeah, okay. no, no, no other savings. Well, I have some gold and stuff in the safe, but that's about it. Or silver, not gold. Sorry. OK, did you have investments, though, that you said you you cashed out? Yeah, yeah I cashed out. Um, yeah, I sold them. So how much cash did you get from those? $116. Oh, okay. So that, that, that's why it's, that, that's part of the 200. And, and the golden, oh. the gold and silver, did you say gold and silver or just gold? No, just, just, so, just, no, just silver. I made a mistake. I oh. wish I had gold. No, <laughs> well, gold. how much, how much, what's the value of that? Uh, I think it's just like 20 bucks because it's just a, a, a silver dollar. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So hold on to that. Keep it someplace real. Keep it in your top sock drawer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so let's just walk through these baby steps just so you understand what the path is going forward. Because as of right now, uh, you know, Rachel just talked about baby step one, and you're just going to start saving for that $1,000 to get it saved, right? And then from there, we're mm-hmm. going to pay off this little bit of credit card debt that you have. You're going to be able to, hopefully you can cash flow all of this with one like payment cycle, which I think you can. And then from there, it's baby step three. We want to get three to six months saved up. In your case, three months might do it. Um, if you're looking to move out anytime soon, maybe make it a little bit more so you have a little bit more to jump off into living on your own when the time comes. And then from there, baby step four, we're putting away 15% into retirement. And I think for now, that's a good place for you to kind of land and just kind of get your bearings in those first four baby steps. Uh, how does that sound? That sounds that sounds good. Yeah. Hey, John, tell me about your job. I was a little bit confused. Will you walk me through what your plan is? You're 22. You're living at home. Um, you're making 19000 a year. What's what's your what's your aspirations when it comes to careers? So I want to, I'm going to go to college in the summer. Um, I want to major in business and major in computer science. Okay, That's great. Good for you. How are you going to pay for that? Um, so because of my uh, disability, because I am uh, legally blind. So because of that, oh, wow. I can yeah. get a lot, a lot of it paid by uh, Texas Workforce. Yeah, cool. Solutions. John, great so job. As as I pass. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Well, you're that's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, so we are cheering you on to get scholarships and to be able to get that degree and make some big income coming in, um, you know, even more than what you're making now uh, and start saving and doing all this. And John, the one of the best things going for you, number one, is that you're you care. Yep. Um, there's such a level of personal responsibility you can hear from him. Yes. And he wants to do this well. And I think you're at a really good spot, John, to do this really well. Um, like Jade was saying, you know, even with your numbers, I'm like, oh, you could get that cleaned up, you know, so quickly. Um, and that's exciting for me on this end, John, to, to encourage you in that, because I think you're going to be able to get through these baby steps. And uh, and, and kudos to you too, John. Yes. Let me just say that. that uh, 22 years old. Yeah. Oh, he's not letting anything hold him back. No, he's not. So well that. done, John. Thanks for calling in. Whew, no excuses. Let's take another call. We got Adam in Gillette, Wyoming. What's going on, Adam? How can we help? Uh, yeah, I just had a quick question about uh, the baby steps. So my wife and I, are in, we're in baby step two, mm-hmm. um, and I'm looking at doing a career change from being a teacher to being an administrator. And for that, we would end up having to move. So I've already interviewed for the administrator position, and we would end up having to move about three and a half hours away Okay. Um, if I were to get it. So I was just curious, do I need to, if I should be looking to stop baby step two or put it on hold for a while, if that offer comes down the pipe, um, to save up and pay for the move, or do we just kind of keep going at it and then just kind of hope to use the equity from our house on the move or? Yeah, Adam, that's a really good question. If I were you, and this is also what we teach, again, another time to pause the baby steps and make sure that you can stack up money and prepare for the move because you're going to want to use whatever equity from the home to roll into your next home purchase. And can I just tell you from experience, it is expensive to move. So stack up as Mm -hmm. much money as you can because there's always, I mean, really sit down with your wife and start budgeting out all of the costs, anything that you can possibly foresee. Now is a good time to start pricing out the different uh, moving and storage. Matter of fact, it's a good time to take a look at Pods Moving and Storage, (laughs) you know, and see what they have. I know they've got really great promos offered all the time. Um, So yeah, definitely pause the baby steps, stack up that money, and then, you know, see how it goes from there. Yeah, and I would get, um, yeah, definitely I would, check out pods. Um, and if there's other things, other companies you're wanting to look at, get get kind of a roundabout, you know, estimate of what you think it's going to, what the move is going to take. And then I would make that my next goal to have that money saved so that when the time comes to move, it's like, okay, that money's there for it. And Adam, you guys may even surpass that amount of money. And if you do, then you guys can press play on baby step two and keep knocking out that debt. But I do want you to have some money stacked away to be able to cash flow that move. Um, so, yeah, I would go and look at some estimates and kind of have that number in your head, you and your wife, and save up to that. And then beyond that, continue down baby step two. I love that. What do you think, Adam? Mm-hmm. That sounds that sounds good. That's actually what I was thinking. I was kind of thinking it was like like you guys teach when you're having a kid. It would yes. be a time to stack it up. But I just wasn't 100% sure yeah, on, on how we should do it. I mean, we're we're only three months into the baby steps, so it's kind of. You it's know. new. Yeah. And the and the hard thing is, yeah. is that for so many people, especially if you guys are on baby step two and you're kind of in it and you're feeling the progress, it's like, oh, to pause it. Sometimes it's like you, can't, you, oh, you don't yeah. want to lose the momentum. So there's a little <laughs> bit of me that's always like, man, don't pause it. But you want to be wise. You know, you don't want to be caught to be like, oh, my gosh, I have this great new job. Oh, my gosh. And yeah. I have to move and I have no cash. You know, so you want to be wise in the process. But also keep that gazelle intensity going as you're pay- as you're saving up for the move. Absolutely. And that will help, too. Oh, man. And I, I actually posted a reel on social because uh, we just moved from South Florida here to Tennessee in September. And um, the pr- just just when you think there's no more cost something else happens and it's just like oh gosh I didn't think about that so as much as you can write everything out try to prepare because as I said just when you think it's finished something else will pop up and it's like oh my gosh but it's so much peace when you're prepared for it so yes I love that you are listening to The Ramsey Show
Y'all, there's a lot you can't control when it comes to healthcare, but there is something you should check out that can help. Christian Healthcare Ministries. CHM is not insurance. It is budget-friendly, biblically-based health cost sharing. That means a community of members helping share the burden of each other's healthcare costs. They help people just like you in all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Learn more today at chministries.org slash budget. I'm your host, Jade Warshaw, joined by Rachel Cruz. This is fun, Rachel. I'm enjoying hosting with you. I know. And we were together last night at the Building Wealth Indianapolis event. Sold out. Totally sold out. Yes. Over 2,000 people. And it was such a great night. It was so fun. And here we are working. I know. George Camel. He's probably home asleep. I mean. He's getting that good sleep, Rachel. We are. We're working hard. (laughs) We're keeping keeping the ship afloat. We are. (laughs) And can I just say the people of Indianapolis, such a great people Such kind of, i was just so telling someone sweet. today yes i was telling someone earlier i'm like man i don't know what it is but they were just kind and mm-hmm. wonderful and yep so it was fun it was a yes. fun event i'm excited next week we'll be in austin doing the same building wealth live event rachel are you on that one i'm not on that one are you i am I okay believe so you're going out next week yes it is myself dave ramsey ken coleman and john deloney oh Jade, I'm oh, yeah. sorry I won't be there for female support. I'm the You're- lone female. <laughs> Guys, somebody needs to come get me because this is going to be, it's going to be fun. That's so great. Yeah, I'll be in, I'll be in Salt Lake City okay. in April with George, Christina Ellis, and Dave Ramsey. And yep. then we have Anaheim, yep. California, which I think is May 3rd. Yes. Does that sound right? Yep. And so that's going to be Dave Ramsey. John Deloney, Ken Coleman, and Christina Ellis. Yes. So you can get all your tickets there at those cities at RamseySolutions.com. So get make sure them fast. Out. Get They're them fun. fast because these, these things are selling like hotcakes. So get, get these tickets. It's so exciting. All right, Rachel. There's something that's been floating around. People have sent it to me in my DMs. I come in this morning to an email from James Childs, our producer. Guys, credit card debt. It is just going bananas. Okay, it says, uh, as credit card debt hits an all-time high. All-time. Hold History. on. Just shy of a trillion with a T-T-T-T-T. And that's just credit card debt, Jay. That's not car loans. That's not student loans. That's Ooh. nothing. Credit card debt. It says, in the final three months of 2022, it's hit an all-time high. Delinquencies among borrowers obviously have accelerated. I mean, it makes sense. We're taking out more debt. We can't afford the debt. And now we're defaulting on the payments. It says, balances grew $61 billion, billion in the fourth quarter from previous uh from the previous one to nine hundred and eighty six billion dollars. <laughs> Wait, that is unbelievable. It jumped from ni- sixty one billion to nine hundred and eighty six billion. <sighs> so much. I'm just, so much. Sorry, I'm really just taking this in because it's ridiculous. And here it says U.S. household debt jumped to a record sixteen point ninety trillion from October through December last year, the largest quarterly increase in twenty years, as mortgage and credit card balances surged amid high inflation and rising interest rates. All right, and let's just say this because usually people are talking about the interest rates, you know, on mortgages. Right. And we're talking about the housing market. Yeah, the interest rates on your credit cards, you guys are going up. And here's the deal. And here's why we keep saying to have that emergency fund in place Mm -hmm. and figure out your income minus expenses needs equal zero, living on a zero-based budget and all that. Because if you don't have a plan for your money, Jade, you know who has a plan? The credit card companies. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And they are prepared for this, you guys. They are ready to be your emergency fund. Yes. That on top of fees and interest, and then people can't pay the credit card bills. And and, and it ends up Girl. being a massive, a massive problem. Yeah. And so that's why they're dangerous. That's why people are always like, you don't just carry one. You don't. I'm like, no, play with snakes. You're going to get bit. You're like, going to get bit. No, no. Stay away, you guys, and, and figure out a way that you are your emergency yes. fund. Yes. And not the credit card companies and the banks. And I mean, with these interest rates, Rachel, the average interest rate now, 
on credit cards on credit Brr. cards 20 mm-hmm. percent. that's out of control and here's the thing here's the the way my brain works i'm thinking okay if you're using your credit card to buy daily things because you're not on a budget because here's the thing a lot of people are they do they keep their credit cards there for emergencies but then there's that sect of people who's like okay i'm not really on a budget i'm not really watching where my money is going so there's this gap at the end of the month or midway through the month. And I'll just use the credit cards to float me when I go to the grocery store or heaven forbid, when you go to a restaurant and eat dinner right. and you're, you're scan. Can I just, you're scanning your credit card for a meal that's going to be gone, Rachel, in about, in about four to six hours. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. So you're literally flushing money down the drain. Yes. Oh. You're flushing it down the toilet. And Oh, and, and God. Here, and here's, Don't get me started And on here's this. the big thing. We were talking about inflation last night at the event, and all of the numbers that are coming out are saying, on average, food is up yes. 9.8%, 10%. Yeah. And it feels more than that. Eggs are up like 60% it or something does. crazy. So I know there are certain products that are, are up more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But here's the deal. If you don't have that margin... Yeah. When this inflation hits, that needs to be your wake-up call to That's say, right. wow, if I have a 10% change in something... Yes. And it is knocking me out to depend on credit cards. Then your whole financial picture needs to look different, you guys. Mm-hmm. And that's not to shame you. That's not to right. to say, oh my gosh, like you're so stupid. All that. No, no. It is to be able to say, man, what I am doing is not working. Yeah, it's and a symptom of something greater, right, Rachel? That's right. That's exactly right. And you know this, Jade. But I mean, we, we talked about this even last night again. But just the the lifestyle that we choose to live, regardless yeah. of whether there's money in the bank or not. Yeah continues, continues to be at this level. And you can't just be at that level if you don't have the money. And the and, and the credit cards yeah. are filling in that gap. And it's getting people in so much trouble, you guys. We are walking around in such financial bondage yeah. to have what? To have the nice dinner out, to have the purse, to, to and I would say to have it's the food. It. To have the to food, have sure. The food. And oh. all of it. But, but again, if you have a seven hundred dollar car payment leaving, <laughs> if you have your student loan Ooh. payment leaving, then you have yeah, no money. You're you have no money, away. you guys. It's a it's the whole picture. We want you to wake picture. up. It is the whole picture, and we want you guys free from that. That's why we do this show because we're like, we want to help guide you and show you there is such a better way to live with your money. Yep. And you're you're a true testimony to that, Jade. I was just thinking about that, and and I do want to hit that because I know there are people listening right now that are like Jade, Rachel. Yes, you're right. The people who are spending credit card money to buy steak, bad, bad, bad. But I'm just, I'm just trying to pay my bills. I'm trying to keep the lights on. And I, I hear that because there were, there was a stretch of time uh, because Sam and I had over 20,000 in in credit card debt, just so y'all know. And there was a stretch of time that we weren't working. Uh, We were in between jobs. And we, when I tell you we had close to $0 coming in and we were using credit cards to try to like fill in the gaps. The worst idea ever. Mm. And we thought, oh, we'll just do this. It's just temporary. And then, you know, when we get when we get back on our feet or when we get working again, we'll pay it all off. And that is such a vicious cycle because you're just creating more debt for the, you know, you're creating more debt that you can't pay because you don't have any money. That's right. And the best thing that you can do when you're in a situation where money is low, right, because income is not enough, is to go out and just get more work and 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 don't be too far above any form of work. Yes. Because I think that there's a, I, can I just be honest? I think some people are like, no, I'm too good to work at the mall or I'm too good to deliver pizzas or I'm too good to take to that. drive Uber or whatever yes, it is. Yeah. But you've got whatever it takes to yep. not take on debt. That is noble. And there is so much dignity in saying, I am going to pay my own bills. I am going to make my own way. I am not going to do this with high interest. Because let me tell you something, just because you take out high interest debt does not make you a more interesting person. All right? <laughs> it just makes you more broke. So it, it, there is dignity to that. But I hear the person who's like, man, I'm just trying to make ends meet. And if that's you, the best thing I can encourage you to do, get on a budget, focus on the four walls and find any work that you can just to, because it's probably just temporary. That's right. right? Yep. And yep. just close that gap up. The worst thing that you can do 
uh, in a time like that is depend on credit cards, yes. especially at the tune of 20% interest. All right. That's right. I know you keep kind of digging into that hole and it mm-hmm. gets deeper and deeper. And the deeper it is, the more time and the more effort on the other end you're going to have to do to climb your way out. That's right. So stay, keep your head above water. And like you're saying, Jade, yes, that extra income, bring it in. There's so many side hustles right now in life. Yes. There is. And it's not going backwards. It's actually propelling you to go forward in life, That's to take right. control of your income. So you guys, you can do this. We hear stories day in and day out with our jobs of people that are that decide to make a change. And yes. they're not going to be these stats anymore of the highest credit card debt that we've seen yet in history. So don't be a stat either. Don't be a stat. And if you've got credit card debt, work it into your debt snowball, list them out smallest to largest, make minimum payments on all of it, and throw any and all extra money at the smallest debt and move with speed and intensity to get it paid off. This is The Ramsey Show. You're listening to The Ramsey Show. I'm Jade Warshaw, your co-host, and I'm here with Rachel Cruz. This is a great time. Hey, guys, if you've got calls, we want to take your calls. The number here is 888-825-5225. And uh, let's take a call, Rachel. Let's see what Megan is talking about in Dallas, Texas. What's going on, Megan? Hi, Jade. Hi, Rachel. Um, So I just graduated with my master's in August. Mm -hmm. However, my mother passed away in June. Oh, I'm so sorry. And um, yeah, I've been living with him for some time because I had a problem. I've been sober for seven years. Uh, So I was like living with him while I was going to school. And now I have my new job and I'm making like $60,000 a year. I have a car payment and I have some credit card debt. I also have fifteen thousand dollars cash and twenty seven thousand in retirement. Um, the thing is, is like I, I feel like I'm not really intentional with my money because I still live with my dad, um, so I still kind of feel like a perpetual eighteen year old because I'm like, ah, it's okay. I pay my credit cards off every month, but I use my credit cards so much that. It's like I don't save any money. So I was thinking, like, I probably ought to just move out to, like, get more serious and independent with my money. However, part of me doesn't want to leave him right now because it hasn't even been a year since my mom passed away. Mm-hmm. Was her passing, was it sudden, Megan, or was it... Um... So she was like, she was, she was sick since like 2021. Um, She was doing really well. And then she went to the hospital and all this other stuff and she got COVID and then her organs started shutting down. Oh my gosh. So yeah, it was like really, really crappy. Um, So it was kind of sudden, like me and my dad both believed that she would get better. Mm. Um, Unfortunately, that's not what God had planned. Mm. Um, but like, I just don't know because like my dad has never lived on his own. He has seven brothers and sisters. He went straight to the army and then him and my mom got married while they were both in the army. So wow. it's like, it's hard. Cause I don't want to just leave him with yeah. no one. You know, number one, I'm so sorry. That sounds just unthinkable. It's so tough, um, navigating a loss like that. And, you know, I'm just thinking about in, in, a lot of situations, especially dealing with money, we would tell people not to move quickly, you know, take time to grieve and uh, take time to adjust to this change. And I feel like in the same situation, it applies. I don't feel like you need to be in a rush to do anything. Like you said, it hasn't even been a year. It hasn't been a long span of time. Um, I, I'm okay with you doing whatever you need to do to process this. If that's staying at home a little bit longer. Um, While you're there, I do think it's important that you think about a plan of what's going to happen next. Yeah. You know? Because I like, I got the Every Dollar app Mm -hmm. and I'm like looking at my spending and I'm like, holy crap, girl, like you're nuts with money. 
Oh, you're not, like, not. You're not nuts, Megan, with money. That's the yeah. yeah. But you are a daughter who lost her mom, and so that that brain fog, the processing that that has to go through. Um, what you go through, it's a lot. And so was there probably some spending you did maybe to to feel better and to feel good? And, and, and you know, was there a level of that maybe? I'm not sure. Possibly you could say yes or no to that. But um, I don't want you to to sit there and just absolutely wring yourself out on this. I mean, you've yeah. gone through a, a tragedy. And so um, I think you're starting to kind of come out of it the way you're talking and you're kind of seeing, okay, I need to kind of get into, I need to get my money in, under control. I need to start looking and to see, okay, how can I be an adult? Uh, but yet here's my grieving dad over here. But I would say with that relationship too, Megan, um, you know, we love our parents and honor them, but also he can't be your responsibility. That's you, right. you can't be the thing that saves him because then that's how you're going to spend your entire life. And he has to be able to do that work on his own. And he may, he may f- grieve and feel lonely and all that. And you can be a, a great daughter and walk beside him. And maybe there's still a season, like Jade said, that you don't move out right now, right? Maybe it's all still feels fresh and you're like, I want to get a few things under my belt. And so I'm going to stay here and maybe have a date that you talk to him about to say, hey, dad, I'm looking at this and be honest with him and say, dad, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous to leave. I don't yeah. want to leave you. I feel bad leaving you. And you guys talk through that. Um, but also I want you to know, Megan, you know, you you can't, he can't be your, you can't be his responsibility. He can't be your responsibility. That's right. There, there can't be that, right. that codependence there. Um, mm-hmm. There kind of has to be that breaking that you do have to stand on your own at some point. Mm-hmm. But again, you don't have to rush that. We're not telling you to rush it, but I do want you to think about that. You're not a bad daughter or you're not being mean or cruel. If you say, man, I need to get my own apartments. Yes. And start, you know, really doing, doing my life this way and all of that. That is not negligent or cruel. Um, because you're both going to grieve in different ways. Yes, you for know, sure. It, and, and that time process is going to be different for both of you. So you might be at a point where it's like, okay, like I feel like I'm coming out of this fog a little bit. I feel like I'm ready to, you know, go to this next stage. And he might still be feeling like, oh, like I could really use somebody here at the house. But, you know, that's when it's going to have be time to have those tough conversations. I do like that you're looking at your money in that you're realizing that something's going to have to change in order for you to stand on your own when that time comes. And I I love that you're looking at, are you using every dollar? Yeah, I like, so I'm 30, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And like, I'm still single and I'm like, I wouldn't want to be a 30 year old man still living at home. Sure. So that's like kind yeah. of playing to it yeah, a and I think too, you're, you know? Yeah. Because like I'm 30, I don't want to be like 40 having my first child. Right. So let's... Like, so it's like six in one, half a dozen in the other because it seems like almost every day for him is a bad day. Mm. Still. Yeah. Has he done... Do you guys have a great church, a good pastor, or a, good, or a, or a therapist, or any anyone speaking into this process of your mom's yeah, loss? Yeah, he um, he goes to church every Sunday with my aunt, and then also I got him to go to Grief Share. That's great. Um, good, good. At yeah. a local church, and I'm like trying to ease in the counseling thing. Like he said, probably he might ought to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because um, I mean, so. the big goal too. I feel like I sound like Dr. John Deloney a little bit, but <laughs> but to become whole people through this journey as well, Megan, right? There, there can be that level of healing. And so for you, that may look like the next step is to say, hey, dad, I'm going to sit down and and here's the dates, you know, by May of this year, um, here's here's what my plan is. And I, I still want to be there for you and still support yeah. you where I can. And then Megan, you know, as you're calling in for this show specifically with your money, like what Jade was saying, and then you start, you can even start now working the baby steps. Yeah. You can start now. You, you have the Every Dollar app. Start looking at your all your credit card debt. List it out. List out the car. Uh, keep your retirement. Don't cash it out. But you have $15,000 of cash, which is That's wonderful. That's a big step. Yep. yep. To throw some of that at the debt. Start getting a, some of these quick wins with your money. And that's also going to breed a level of confidence for you to maybe even say, okay, I can do this and oh, step out and and start, you know, living on my own and and really taking that turn because you can, Megan, you can do this. You definitely can. And in every dollar, one of my favorite features, Megan, is the financial roadmap. And you can plug in all your numbers and you can actually start to see the date 
that you'll be debt free, the date that you'll have, you know, three to six months of savings. And that's something that will build a lot of confidence and help you to see, okay, what would happen if I were to put more on my debt? What would happen if I were to put less on my debt? So you can really customize that timeline um, so that this can become a real a, a reality for you moving forward. Yeah. And hang on the line, Megan, because we'll give you and your dad two separate codes to have Financial Peace University for a year because I would love him to maybe go through it as well on his own um, because like you said, he's never lived on his own. He's always had someone with him and so giving him a little bit of boost in this area of his life, uh, we would love to gift both of you that. So Austin will pick up um, That's great. And, and, and get and both of those. own your past change your future yes yeah, yeah throw one of those in too throw two of those in guys for, for both of them <laughs> because we do we want we want to see you and your dad uh do really well out of this really excruciating terrible loss i'm so sorry megan i'm glad you called in Whew, that was a tough call i appreciate you guys joining us for today that does it for today's show be sure to join us next time when it comes to changing your money you can tell me you won't do it but please don't tell me you can't this is the ramsey show What's up, guys? It's Jade. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving and storage studio, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth. We help you do work that you love and create actual amazing relationships. I'm your host, Jade Warshaw, joined by Rachel Cruz. Give us a call today. We want to talk about whatever it is that's on your mind, whatever it is that's been bugging you trying to make a decision, we want to help you. The number is 888-825-5225. And let's go directly to the phone lines. We've got Stephen on the line. Stephen's in Austin, Texas. How can we help you today, Stephen? Well, first of all, thank you for taking my call. I'm listening to you folks. I believe you guys are awesome. And um, now what what I want to say is... Hey, have, are you in a place where you can kind of dial it back? I just heard a little something there. Yeah, I'm at my job right now. But okay. Anyway, I'm in that corner of the job here, and that's kind of point to get that out of the way. Okay. How All can right, we help so, today? Well, I want to go to move to a different position mm-hmm. where I've had prior experience and has the potential to make a lot more, a lot more lucrative career. And um, one place right now where I work is a big box home improvement store. Mm-hmm. And um, the you now this place, I, you know, they have the benefits here, so they are able to have uh, my health insurance, which takes care of my medications that okay. I take every day mm-hmm. or every month. Which the medications are up around ten grand a month. Gosh, and, what, what, what's your what's what's the health issue, Steve? Yeah, Stephen, what's what's going on? Epilepsy. Oh, mm. I'm so sorry. Yeah, and the biggest part of all this is me not being able to drive back and forth to work. Mm. No, I have to have my wife drive me. Or right now, my father there in law, he's down here. He does it too. Mm-hmm. So, but so, your health insurance is covering the cost of your medication for that at this point. Exactly. Okay. And my wife's so scared of me trying to find another job because mm. uh, we'll be losing my insurance. Now, I came up with a plan here. <laughs> it may sound a little crazy, but if I can get, I have, you know, a bunch of vacation days I can use mm-hmm. in sick time, and I can maybe get you know, two or three months worth of medicine you know, stocked up, go and find these 
different uh, job offers and interviews that have been uh, have been asked of me to go do, mm-hmm. I can I can do that. So, so you've got a list of prospects. You've got a list of jobs that you're interested in that you're interested in applying for. And they're interested in me coming to them. Yeah, okay. that's great. Also, yeah. So yes, yeah, so yeah, so, Stephen, you could use some vacation days mm-hmm. um, for that, or if you have a yeah an interview in the afternoon, maybe it's if it's are you on on an hourly pay right now? Uh, yes, I'm on an hourly pay. Okay, so and, yeah, so even if you had to take off a, an afternoon um, to go right. and interview with a company, you know, to do that for sure. But I would not jump ship until you have another job solidified because you don't want your insurance. Yeah. To, to, yeah. I'm with your wife on that. That would be scary. If, if you had a gap between quitting this job and, you know, waiting, I guess, for another job. So making sure that you have one that's secure um, so that you can just move your health insurance over and, and, and be, on a new plan, you know, maybe with a new carrier or whatever that looks like with your new job uh, and making sure that it has benefits because yeah, of your, of your health situation, that is something that you're going to want set up for sure. How old are you, Steven? I'm 40 years old. We just had our first newborn baby. Congratulations. Congratulations. How you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling great. uh, uh, Newborns are tough sometimes. They are. I like this idea. I like the idea of you looking for work if you're, you know, whether it's you're looking to increase your income or you're looking to increase your benefits. I like that. What I want you to do is really sit down and dream about where you want to be long term and, you know, not just pick something because it's more money or not just pick something because of the benefits, but pick something because it's really something that energizes you. Uh, Like Ken Coleman would say, something that gives you the juice and gets those juices flowing so that you're doing work that matters and work that really uh, matters to you. We appreciate that call, Steve, and hopefully we were able to help you out there. Uh, let's take another call. We got Rob in Denver, Colorado. What's going on, Rob? How can we help today? Hey, guys. How are you? Doing good. How are you? Good, good, good. Hey, quick question for you. My wife and I, um, we are in baby steps step four, five, and six. And we're kind of um, planning ahead five years out where do we want to be. And we would like to upgrade in a home. Uh, and my question is, is, to start planning uh, to make sure that it's, it's a good decision and that we have enough money. Is, is it best to pay towards the interest, I'm sorry, towards the principal that we have today? Um, or do we just pay the minimum amount and then take whatever we have left over and start saving up for another down payment? What, what would you guys suggest? I would continue to, to, pay off your house That's because you're going to be building equity in that. So there's still going to be, you're going to see that money again. Uh, it'll just be mm-hmm. an equity. And so I would do that. And because Rob, there's not like an actual specific, like, oh yeah, we're moving to that house in six weeks. Right. And you know, there's not like a very, very specific plan. You just know you want to upgrade. So while that dreaming is kind of still going uh, and before the logistics are put into place, just keep throwing money at the house and just be paying that okay. off. Yep. Building that equity. Cause when you guys do finally say, Oh yeah, here's the house we want. And you go through the process. Yeah. You'll have more equity in the house to roll over to the second house. Would you say the same Jade? Yeah. I love that plan. Uh, and for another reason, I think that whenever you pay it towards your current mortgage, it's a forced, it's forced savings. And because it's already gone into that account, you can't touch it. So if you were just putting it into savings, right. Instead of putting it on your mortgage. Let's say you're stacking it up in a savings account. Look, Hawaii, things pop up. Hawaii might be like, hey, okay. hey, next summer. Yeah, <laughs> here I, I am. <laughs> I always say Cousin Boo Boo's destination wedding. It always comes at the worst possible time. Right when you've got <laughs> right when you've got ten thousand dollars saved, Cousin Boo Boo gets married in the Caribbean. And, and you got to so, go. <laughs> and you oh. got to go. And so that's why we would suggest go ahead and throw it to your current mortgage. And when you get ready to move, you're going to sell the house and you're going to have this nice uh, little nest egg of equity there. So, you know, Rachel, that's the thing. You know, we think that we'll save this money and that we're like such good savers and we always do what we say we're going to do with our money. Mm -mm, Doesn't always happen. I like to build in the accountability. Yes. I like to bake it right in. Accountability and that equity. (laughs) It's a good question, Rob. It's a very good question. So that's what we would say to do. Anytime that you have money earmarked for something, if you can just build in that accountability so that you don't actually 
accidentally, quotes around accidentally spend it on something else, especially when it comes to something as major as a home purchase. You definitely want to be able to do that because he's going to make money on it. And, you know, he's going to have it ready for him right. and waiting when it is time. This is The Ramsey Show. Look, I love real estate, and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership, and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey, to start your approval or get more information. We're here for you. Whatever you're going through, if it's money, if it's relationships, if it's career. Hey, we're moms. If you're a mom and you're just like, uh, at your wits end, give us a call. I'm Jade Warshaw. This is Rachel Cruz. Give us a call at 888-825-5225. And today is a very special day. Yes, it is. I didn't know about this. I didn't know either. Today is Random Acts of Kindness Day, which I love this. February 17th, it says... If you're in the spirit of doing good, what better day to give back than on National Random Acts of Kindness Day, February 17th? Who knew? I, I know. Love this. So it started over 40 years ago in the San Francisco Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And a journalist is credited with coining the phrase, practice random acts of kindness and senseless acts of beauty. Love that. So that article was published. And it sparked a kindness movement that spread to surrounding areas. And yeah, so it's just kind of a fun, uh, a fun day because we love giving. Yeah. We talk about generosity a lot on this show and it's part of the legacy that you leave. It's part of one of the reasons why we talk about being wise with your money yep. and getting out of debt to have that margin so that you can give, save and spend all the things. Uh, yes. But giving is a it's a big part and everyone can participate in random acts of kindness. That's too. right. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Kindness is definitely contagious. It doesn't have to be tons of money. I mean, you can do something for five dollars. That's right. When whenever somebody gives me one of those like five dollar Starbucks gift cards. Yes. It's like, woohoo. Yes, like, thank it's you. just such a great <laughs> way to be kind. And, you know, we were talking about it last week. I think John and I were on and we were just saying how with everything going on, inflation and like, you know, uncertain economies it's really easy to kind of like focus our energy on that as yeah. opposed to going, okay, how do I rise above this? And one of the best ways is to take the focus off of you and all of your like, uh, and like constraint and go be generous. That's right. Go do anything. And we should, let's do a challenge, Jade. Yeah, I like this. To everyone listening, mm -hmm. go and five bucks. It five can just be $5. Five dollars. Dollar random holla. acts of kindness. And if you document it, Put it on social, hashtag the Ramsey way. Yes. And let's collect some of these stories and keep the random acts of kindness from over 40 years ago. Yes. Still in play. Let's keep this do going. That. Hashtag the Ramsey way. And hey, like tag us in it. Like tag yeah. at Rachel Cruz, tag at Jade Warshaw, George Campbell. Tag all of us because we want to see what you're doing. We want to share it on our social. We just want to make this thing contagious because like Rachel said, the whole point of living like no one else 
is so that later you can live mm -hmm. and give like no one else. And I think that no matter where you are in the baby steps, there's always a place for generosity. Even right. if it's just a little bit, you can you can do this. So, oh, I love this. Random acts of kindness day. Makes me Ooh. feel even better. It does. You know? It makes me feel great. February 17th. Don't forget it. <laughs> Don't forget it. It makes me feel so good. I want to take a call from Andrew in San Jose, California. What you got going on, Andrew? Hi, how are you both doing? Doing good. How are you? I'm doing, I'm doing good. Um, first, thank you for taking my call, giving me a chance to help me with my question. Um, Absolutely. Well, Simply put, uh, in the last four to six months or so, I got really caught up just inflating my lifestyle, and now pretty much got myself in a, let's say, bad car situation that I'm oh, really no. just, just trying to get out of. Oh, no. Tell us about it. What's going on? So um, <clears throat> I got a, a new car that at the time um, I felt like I could handle the monthly payments, but uh, it kind of just feels like, you know, don't have much of a cash flow, and uh, it's just... I really, I'm, at this point, I'm, sell, I'm sold on selling the car. And the question I have for you guys is like, is it better for me to buy a car in cash so I'll pay down my debt faster or finance something like at a third of the cost that will keep forever? What do you think we're going to tell you? Buy a car in cash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why do you, well, I'm, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Because I want to see, I, I want to make sure that you know the reason why. Because you're feeling the pinch of this car payment. How much is your car payment, Andrew? Eleven hundred dollars a month. Ooh wee. Yep, you are feeling that. Yeah, because I mean that's above How average. How much do you make a year? I make about last year I made a little over hundred. This year I'm on track to make about one twenty. Okay. So you've had the car for three months. And now yeah. you're thinking, whew, this was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. So to Jade's question, why do you think that we <laughs> are going to suggest to pay for your next car with cash and not take out another loan? Um, well, so I no longer have a monthly payment and, you know, it helped me save up faster. Um, and, I, I, and, and yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much it. my... To give you some, some background as far as why I was even thinking the other option um, is really uh, my, I, I've heard you guys give the advice before of telling people, you know, go buy a $3,000, $5,000 car, write it, and then uh, help you pay down the, the, the cash. But I, I'm i wondering if if that, uh, like, I'm, I'm, wor I'm worried that I'm going to get a car like that and mm -hmm. then, you know, three, six months, it's going to have a lot of payments or it's going to have to, like, a lot of fixes or something and then I'm going to end up doing the same thing again. I think and as long as you... Hoping, I think is look I I've, I've only I've only driven used cars. I've never had a brand new car in my life. And I think as long as you do the research, check out the car facts, find out as much as you can about the car and and make a solid purchase, that's thing one. And then thing two, we always talk about having an emergency fund. Your emergency fund is there in case something crazy goes wrong, right? There's that. And then your third level of protection is, you know, always having a sinking fund just sitting there for regular car maintenance so that you're taking care of your vehicles and, and you're doing the things like the oil changes and the tires and changing the 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 belts and all I don't know all the car terminology, but You're doing you're, great, Jade. You're you're selling me you. on it. If, you know, <laughs> the rotator cuff, you know, whatever it's called. I don't know what that is. But as long as you're the alternator, there you go. As long as you are taking care of your vehicle, as long as you have your emergency fund set aside, I think it's really easy to focus on those horror stories and, and, it, and let it talk you out of doing what's right. But I know plenty of people who have bought new cars and they've had car troubles. So I think that's just kind of like that, that well, Andrew, button that we hit to make it. Here's going to be your biggest, here's your biggest hurdle. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Your ego. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's it. Because you are sitting in a brand new, very expensive car. What kind of car is it? It's a Tesla. Yeah. Tesla? It's a Tesla. This is close to Rachel's heart now. <laughs> I will have a moment of silence Come with on, you, Rachel. Andrew. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But listen, you're gonna it's gonna hurt. Your ego yeah. is gonna hurt. You've been driving around up to work, up with friends, going to dinner in your new Tesla. Mm -hmm. And now you're gonna show up in a Camry. That's right. And your ego's gonna take a hit. But you know what? Guess what? Your Andrew's gonna have money again. Okay. Andrew's gonna have money. And that's what you have to focus on, Andrew. It's amazing how we just get so much of, we were talking about the consumerism in the last hour, but it's true. I'm like, man, this, this lifestyle feel, and somehow we think if I just had a nice car, 
Uh, if I just could go on this kind of trip, if I got yeah. to have this kind of house, everything will be better. I'm going to feel better about myself mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. because our cars have become our identity. People look at your car yeah. and they automatically, you know, they make assumptions, think, make assumptions. And so it takes a level of humility, Andrew, to say, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to help Andrew 10 years from now. Yeah. Be in a whole lot better shape to go buy a new Tesla. My goal for you, Andrew, is to go back to a new Tesla. I would love for you, yes. love for you to be an everyday millionaire, be investing, have no debt, cash flow coming in. You're making great money. Mm -hmm. And to be like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go buy a new Tesla and you don't even have to think twice about it. Come on. Drive like no one else. So later you can drive That's like no one goal, else. That's the goal, Andrew. That's the goal. But this thing is eating you alive. So you're going to take a hit on it. You're probably mm -hmm. going to be underwater by buying it brand new and selling it three months later. So you're going to take a small loan out for that difference. Put that in your debt snowball. Go buy a cheap car with $3,000, $5,000. It's fine. And if it breaks down in six months, guess what? It doesn't lose value. Go right. sell it for $3,000 more. Put okay. a few more and go, to, go get another car, right? <sighs> like you can keep moving up in car. But it lists out all of your debts, Andrew. Knock it all out. You have a great income. Get a, a solid emergency fund. And your peace of mind, Andrew, your peace of mind is going to be so different because you're actually going to have peace. You're not going to have stress. I love that. You got it. You got it, Andrew. I but love I'm that. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> he has to amputate the Tesla. It's never an easy thing to do, but he's going to have peace because of it. Look, your car is not your status symbol. It does not say whether or not you are successful or not. What I'm looking at is, do you actually have money, Rachel? That's right. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to save up to 45% off everything site-wide. Go to Blinds.com now to learn more. To the Ramsey Show. I'm Jade Warshaw, joined by Rachel Cruz, and we're taking your calls today about life and money. Go ahead and give us a call. The number is 888 825 5225. And if you're out there and you're looking to sell your house right now, trust me, it can be intimidating. I just went through this process. And since demand is still higher than supply, home prices are still rising, regardless of what all the peoples say. Home prices are still rising. And the buyers, in this market are serious about finding a deal. That means you may have some tough decisions to make on a tight timeline, but look, you don't have to sell your home alone and you shouldn't. Do not try this on your own people, trust me. It's important to work with an expert real estate agent who knows your local housing market inside and out and who will walk you through the selling process step by step. You need a real estate agent who's earned the right to be called Ramsey Trusted. And you can find one through our endorsed local providers program, Ramsey Trusted Pros, who are highly vetted, top tier agents, my team, and I trust. And I do trust. Let me tell you something. I got my real estate agent through Ramsey Trusted, and she was and still is incredible. Phenomenal. M Mandy Lynn Festi, you heard it here <laughs> first. She's incredible. Love her. 
everything that I'm talking about right now. They have what it takes to help you sell your home on your terms and for the best price. Wonderful. If you're ready to sell your home, get a Ramsey Trusted Pro in your corner. It's a free connect today. Just go to RamseySolutions.com slash agent to find one near you. That's RamseySolutions.com slash agent agent. You know, Jade, two two nights ago, we had a VIP dinner in Indianapolis before our Building Wealth event. Yeah. And we had a group of Ramsey trusted real estate agents, tax professionals. Um, we had Smartvestor pros with investing and some other people um, that we have contact with there in the area of, of, of Indianapolis. So mm-hmm. we had a dinner. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, I, and we get to, you know, you and I and the Ramsey personalities that were there, you know, we get to mingle kind of before dinner. You sit at a table and just get to know these people. And I sat with a tax, a, a Ramsey trusted tax mm-hmm. pro yep. and a real estate agent. And they are just those two specifically because I just had dinner with them. I'm like, they're heart for people. Yes. And to help you guys. That's why we recommend people in your corner, especially mm-hmm. these very specific areas of your of your journey with money. Yeah. Uh, Because investing can be intimidating. Selling your home can be intimidating and buying a home. Taxes, like all of these areas of your money. Mm -hmm. Having someone that's a professional that actually cares and loves what they do. Yes. I mean, they love what they do and getting to help people. So make sure to check this out because we vet these people and we just want to, we want you guys to have a level of financial peace and freedom with your money and having good people on your team. That's right. It's so, so huge. Uh, It takes half the, I mean, it takes a stress out of it. It does. Yes. When we were looking for a house here in Tennessee, my girl, my girl, my my real estate (laughs) agent, she came through. She came all the way through. So definitely get with a Ramsey uh, trusted pro in your area. Let's take a call. Let's take Philip. What's going on, Philip, from Indianapolis, Indiana? Hey, I was actually there last night at the Building Wealth. Hey, let's go, Philip. Awesome. uh, Love the energy in there. So I'm calling because I just, I feel like I need some encouragement, maybe a kick in the pants or both. Um, Uh Uh-oh, we can do that. Yeah, I'm I'm 34. I've got uh, $200,000 left in debt, um, about 150000 of that student loans, and then uh, the rest is um, credit cards that I'm paying off, a 401k loan. Um, and my current employer offers $2 for every dollar that I put into my retirement. And so if I put in 500, which is what I've been doing, they add 1,000 every single month. And so I put in 6,000 a year, they add 12,000. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just have been struggling so hard giving that up um, because it's like a 200% return on investment immediately, but I, but I have this debt looming over my head mm-hmm. and I don't, I can't afford a down payment on a house, like I'm right. still renting. And so I'm like, am, I just need to know that I'm going to be okay um, if I pause that for a few years, which is probably how long it's going to take me to get out of this $200,000 in the hole. Mm. What's your income right now, Philip? Uh, I'm a pharmacist and a professor, so it's about 110000 Okay. Um, and my, I recently got married and got another, a third kid on the way. Ooh, congratulations. Um, Does your wife and- work? She's working part time because she's in nursing school right now. Okay. Um, so she's only making about twenty thousand right now. Okay. Um, Was that over, included over in the one ten, or is that in no, addition to? So about in addition to okay. so about one thirty for the household okay. currently. All right. You know, of course, I'm going to always refer back to the baby steps because we know that this is a proven method. I mean, millions of people have used this not only to get out of debt, but, you know, to find financial freedom and go on to become baby steps millionaires. So we know that this method works. So let me precursor it with that. But yeah, that match is going to be there. That match is going to be there. And right now you need all of the money that you can to throw at your debt snowball so that you can get it done as quickly as possible. And here's the thing. When you're done getting out of debt, you're going to have so much more money to put towards retirement. You're going to be able to make up the you're going to make up the difference. And what I would suggest doing, this is like my new favorite thing. If you're not using every dollar, Philip, I would get on every dollar dot com every dollar premium and use the financial roadmap planner because that's where you're gonna plug in all these numbers and you're going to be able to see like the actual math of if I'm putting this much per month towards my debt, how quickly can I have it paid off? That's thing one. But then it's also gonna project out for you, Philip, what the final scenario is gonna be. You're gonna be able to find out when your um, three to six months is saved. You're gonna be able to find out when you're gonna become a Baby Steps millionaire. And it's so motivating. And I tr- trust me, once you plug the numbers in there, you're not gonna be worried about 
you know, the, the little bit of money that you're going to lose on this match because you're going to realize, oh my gosh, I'm going to be debt free in like, I don't know, 24 to 36 months. Yes, right, I know. I was going to say, so pausing for three years, Philip, I'll talk you off the ledge. You're going to be fine. It's fine. Because guess what? You're going to press play and start investing again. And then like what Jade said, when you have that income and you know, and you guys buy a house, you're going to be saving up for a down payment. You guys are going to be doing some really great financial moves that you're actually going to have the money for mm-hmm. uh, and, and the less stress. Because here's the other thing, Philip, that you're not probably taking into account is what this $200,000 debt is doing to you guys. The yep. stress. Mm-hmm. The lack of sleep, you know, we talk about even your, even within your body, your body knows that you are not safe when you don't have autonomy. Mm. And when you owe student loans and MasterCard and all of this, other people have a say over your future. There's a level that you are still owned by them. And there is a true emotional, spiritual lifting that happens when you don't owe someone money. And that, Philip... I don't care what employer does a match of any kind, right? Like that level of just freedom and peace of mind that you guys don't owe anyone anything. Suddenly you may realize they don't want to switch jobs. And you know what? If that other employer has a 3% match, wasn't as great as my other one, but I have the freedom to create a life that I love. Love it. Because I am not tied to these payments. So there is a, there is a mathematical reassurance that we'll give you on that side, that pausing investing for for three years or whatever it is you're gonna be okay you're still young you're fine we would give the same advice actually if you were 50 i mean you know it's the same advice i think i I needed to hear the um you know all of this is really helpful and i think the the clarity is something that i'm just not i haven't seen yet and so yesterday i started plugging in all these compound calculators and i'm like oh wow this is going to be many millions Yes. Because I currently have 180000 in retirement already. And so I'm That's like, if I did nothing, I would have over a million dollars. That's, right. That's right. Yeah. And I'm like, why can I not make the, the jump here to actually like do something about this debt? But I think the roadmap is actually going to be the most helpful thing yes. for me because I'm, I'm someone who's got to see the numbers and know that this is heading in the right direction. So I really appreciate um, you know, the insight and encouragement because I've been looking for it for a little while and I haven't been able to get myself over the hump. So yes, appreciate you guys so much. Well, Absolutely. We are so happy to help. And you know, that's a really good thing that he brings up, Rachel, because it happens all the time that people, you know, they're like, man, I don't want to stop my investing. I don't want to pause, but they don't think they're going to be okay. Can I tell, it took us seven and a half years yep. of not investing. We didn't get to start investing until our mid thirties. You are going to be okay. I because you're going you. to invest one day. Like you're, you're going to invest. It's, it's going to happen. I ain't got nothing else to do with my money, Rachel, right. but invest it. <laughs> it's all going into there. And Amen. I'm like, I look at it and I don't go, oh man, what if I go, yeah, baby. That's right. This That's is right. happening. Everything they told me was going to happen is happening. So it is it. not too late for you. I promise you that. This is The Ramsey Show. show we are on with rachel cruz myself jade warshaw guys if you have questions about anything i don't care what it is it could be retirement it could be inflation it could be meal planning whatever it is that's on your heart and mind give us a call today the number is 888-825-5225 we want to discuss it because chances are whatever it is that's bugging you it's probably not just bugging you it's probably bugging a bunch of other people too whatever question you have it's probably not just you there's probably a lot of other people that have questions too so give us a call. Right now, we're going to go to the phone lines. We've got Debbie in Huntington, West Virginia. What's going on in West Virginia, Debbie? Hello. Thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. Um, about about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, I bought a car for my son. I co-signed for a car. It was a 2017 Veloster Turbo. Okay. And he drove it for about uh, eight months, making the payments. He has a good job. 
and he goes to work every day. So I was proud of him for that. He makes good money. Okay. And um, he, apparently he didn't have the credit. So they flipped it around and put it in my name and put him underneath me. I didn't know that, though. So meanwhile, on the way to vacation, his transmission goes out, and he's not with me. So they tow it off, and they told him it's going to be $9,000 to fix it, and it has under 100,000 miles on it. Okay. So it ends up that they said we didn't have any warranty, but it ends up I had it towed back to home. And they said, yes, you do have warranty on it. And the transmission can be replaced. But so it was in limbo for like four or five months without being fixed because it took them forever to get it done. Okay. Then during that time, my son lost his license. How did that happen? Uh, uh, Long distance driving to a girlfriend. And he got tickets for speeding uh, on the interstate. Aye, aye, aye. And so then he lost his license. Okay. How old so, is your son, Debbie? Um, well, and uh, he's 21 okay. now. Okay. So you spend the 9K to fix and, the transmission. Right. Uh, it didn't cost me anything. It ended up being free. Oh, but okay. The, the warranty. Is, okay. I paid, eight, I paid 18 for the car. We still owe 15. And he really can't drive the car because he doesn't have a license. Is he still working? Um, I don't. Yes, he is. Okay. So where's the, how can and we help because, you today? Well, um, when you lose your license, your insurance goes up. He's no longer yeah. allowed on our insurance because of that. Okay. So he's got like 24 points. Um, and then because of that, he's not going to be able to afford to make the house, the car payment no. and the insurance what's payment. His, what's his like name, that. Debbie? Uh, what's his name? It is Jim. Jim. Okay. I got I got a plan for Jim and you, Debbie. You ready? Yes. I'd sell the car today for eighteen. Mm-hmm. That means you're gonna have three thousand dollars left. I would give it to Jim if you guys are in a good position. No, no, it'll be turned around. We're gonna owe more than we can get out of it. You That's said you said it was show. worth eighteen, and you owe fifteen. I on paid it. eighteen. Oh, you paid eighteen. What is it worth? What's it worth? Yeah. You think? I don't. One of the dealers said they'd give us like ten. Okay. I think right. if we sold it outright, okay. we might be able to get more. All right. So Jim Jim isn't going to like my my plan as I continue down this road. <laughs> no. But I like it, Rachel. But Debbie, get rid of it, Debbie. And you're going to take a small loan of $5,000. You know what we call that, Debbie, around here? <laughs> Stupid tax. <What? laughs> and we've all done it. We've all been in positions where we think, why did I do that? Why did I co-sign <laughs> And now my name. Rachel, it, she it, just it, thought it, she was being a good mom. She was just. She just thought she yeah. was doing the mo- the motherly thing. And so Jim, <laughs> Jim is twenty one. Is he? And he's living at home. And that's you know I'm not going right. to rag on that, but but Jim is twenty one, and he's going to have to learn. I have a long distance girlfriend. I have to now figure out my insurance is up because I drove fast and got multiple speeding mm-hmm. tickets. Yep. I have lost my license. My insurance is up. Debbie, this is not your problem. Nope. Jim has a lot of problems. Okay. And but Mama Debbie can't does it. it. But Debbie doesn't. Debbie has a five thousand dollar problem mm-hmm. that you're gonna have to just you're gonna have to pay. But I would I would just I I, I just he's he's gotta learn. And and, and it's, this isn't like a tough love, like ah oh, blah, blah. But for you, Debbie, I'm looking out for you because I'm like, man. You couldn't, you know, you, again, good heart. So like you yep. said, Jade, yep. the, the, the intention was good. But Debbie, I want you guys, I want you to be in a position that you are being wise with your money. And this, and this isn't, this isn't wise. In fact, what's the scripture yeah. about co-signing, Jade? It, to paraphrase, to paraphrase the scriptures, it says that a person who co-signs is stupid. We're not calling you stupid, yeah, Debbie. The not. Bible did. No, but, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it is saying the act of doing that because <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. And this is a this is a very very good teaching point for everybody listening right now. Um, sorry to put you on this exactly. pedestal, Debbie, but it's a great teaching segment because if there is any situation where somebody would think I can co-sign for this person, they're not going to do me wrong. It is mother to son. Right? Yeah, it's the you, purest. It's the purest oh, relationship right there. The purest of intent. But Jim, Jim took you for a ride. <laughs> well, and they flipped it on her. Yeah, that, they that, did. That, that when they pulled the credit, they put her name on there. So and, I'm like, I don't want you liable, Debbie, with this car. Like, I don't trust the. I don't. I don't like it. That's right. Um, but that's what they do. And you know what, Debbie? And and we have to. We're gonna have to go to a break soon, so I can't get all this information from you. But depending on. Your situation, Debbie, if you are in a financial position, I'm thinking you're not because you went and 
got a car loan for your son and all of that. But for some reason, if you did have, you know, some money to spare after this debt is cleaned up and Mm -hmm. you want to help Jim out and say, hey, Jim, I will match you for your car. You know, Ooh. you save 3000 and I and I will help you with 3000 to get you a 6000. You know, like yeah. if if there's ways to help without enabling. That's true. And so if there is a type of plan like that you want to do, you can, but I want you, Debbie, in a solid financial foundation meaning all of your debts paid off, yes. including this new five thousand dollar loan that you're going to have after the car is sold. Um, and you have an emergency fund in place. Like you are set up, Debbie. Mm-hmm. Jim is twenty one. He has his whole life to figure this he out. He sure does. And and you know what I mean. And you're and you're the mom, so you're in the middle and of the of the age range. So yes. it's like I want you in a good position for retirement. Yes. And thinking large. So again, it's uh, it was out of a good place. It was out of, of a, a good mom's place. heart, and it just it was the worst. It's this is what happens though. The worst happens, and people think it's going to be fine. Yeah. And then it happens. So Debbie, I'm so sorry. Co-signing is the worst. Yeah, don't do it. We weren't calling Debbie stupid, but the no. Bible does say that it's stu- <laughs> it is stupid to sign assurance or to, to co-sign yeah. for someone else. Can I tell you guys a secret live on air? When I was dating Sam, yes, I quote and in big quotes needed a new car yes you did i drove a ford taurus uh, that had lots of special features the heat didn't work like (laughs) and sam was like you need a new car he took me and i have of course had terrible credit he co-signed for my car the dumbest thing ever we were not even engaged so let me tell you i know something to because here's the thing if you're co-signing it means that that person can't cannot <laughs> get they can't get the loan themselves which means the bank knows they ain't got no money uh-huh. the bank knows they can't be trusted yep. that's the whole point of co-signing so think about that for a minute you're putting your neck on the line for something that and, and banks they would love to give you money that's right they, they'll they're, give, they're they'll, right there for you man they'll give money to <laughs> they'll give money to anybody and if they won't give money to this person that is saying something yeah, like that's that a red is flag. your red flag yes. to not sign for them so if we're calling debbie stupid i'm calling myself stupid and i'm no, calling we're not because, calling debbie look, stupid at all i'm just saying the scriptures <laughs> got us on lock on the, they, the scripture put us in a headlock on this one <laughs> don't co-sign the loan now and i love what rachel said because when my kids get older and they get to driving age the plan is to buy cars in cash. Yes. You know? Yeah. They're going to wreck them anyway. I know. They're going to oh, get gosh. dinged up. They're going to get scratched up. Yes. I for sure would never. A brand new car? No. For well, for a 16-year-old? No. 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 Girl. No. But don't you remember not in high school? 21 year old. Not until. Not, yes. In high school, people would come rolling through with yep. brand new cars. Yes. Yes, they would. Oh. Yes, they would. Don't do it. No. Not worth it. Yeah. The car thing. It is. Uh. Oh, it's the piece of debt that I'm like, man, the car loan, <laughs> borrowing money on something going down in value, all of it. But Yes, do not do it. Thanks for calling, Debbie. It was a great call. It's something that we can all, all learn from. We've all done stupid things. The point is that we learned from it. And because we took that call, somebody is going to avoid the perils of co-signing. co-signing. All right, folks, that does it for today's show. Be sure to join us next time. And remember this, when it comes to changing your life and your money, you can tell me that you won't do it. But please, please do not tell me you can't. With Christ, all things are possible. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Rachel Cruz. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. of Ramsey Solutions broadcasting from the pods moving and storage studio. It's the Ramsey show where we help people build wealth, do work that they love and create actual amazing relationships. I'm your host Jade Warshaw today joined by my friend Rachel Cruz. So good to be with you, Jay. It's so great. So I fun. love hosting with you, Rachel. I do too. I do too. When I saw our names for Friday, I thought, oh, 
It's going to be a good day. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a good day. It's going to be good. We want to take your calls, whatever it is that's on your heart, what's on your mind today. Give us a call. The number is 888-825-5225. We're going to go straight to the phone lines. We've got Kayla in Dallas, Texas. What's going on, Kayla? Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call today. Absolutely. Um, I'm I'm calling because I just started FPU and I'm being super compliant because my way has clearly not worked. <laughs> um, so you still want to do it the, the Ramsey way, but I have questions um, just about credit. Like I've cut up my credit card uh-huh. um, as per, you know, the sets. Well, that, oh, way to go. I'm, going, I'm going forward with it. But my concern is I'm in a studio right now. What if I need to like, I don't know, rent another apartment. Don't I need credit for that? Like maybe I've been brainwashed a little bit too much, but I just wanted to ask the professionals. Sure. That's a really good, I mean, that's something that I think a lot of people worry about is how am I supposed to live life without a credit score? It's definitely possible. You know, they do use other things to look at your credit history. They'll look at things like cell phone. They'll look at so many other ways of you paying back debt, but do be prepared because when, when it comes to uh, renting an apartment, if you don't have credit, you are a lot of times going to have to pay more money up front when it comes to like first to last month's rent and things like that. A lot of times, at least in my experience, they have asked for more money up front. Um, we see this too with renting cars and things like that. Yeah. Sometimes we get the short end of the stick because of the way that we're choosing to live our life without debt, but it's still absolutely possible. Uh, do you have anything to add to that, Rachel? Yeah. I mean, I would say, Kayla, usually most apartment complexes that we, you know, as we've done this and heard from people, if you have your first month's rent, last month's rent, security deposit, and like Jade said, other bills to prove that you pay on time, it's not going to be debt, but cell phone, insurance, your current rent that you're renting now, like keeping kind of a ledger of that stuff just to prove and show, I mean, electricity, right? Like mm-hmm. any bill that you have to say, hey, here's my here's my history for the last six months of payment. Here's first month's rent, last month's rent, security deposit, all in full. Uh, most places will still rent you that apartment, but- if they say no, guess what? You get to go right about half a mile down okay. to another complex and say, hey, <laughs> here's my situation. You know, you may have to go shop around, but people are, they, you can still rent an apartment. There are still people that do that, that will rent you the apartment, uh, renting cars. I mean, anything and everything, it is still possible to do without a credit score, without a credit card, all the above. But it, but like Jade said, though, Kayla, it's not just a, pu- a plug and play because companies now use this score for a lot of different things. So there is going to be some runaround a little bit, but let me tell you, the runaround is so much Woo-hoo. worth it than having to sit there and pay <laughs> a bunch of credit card bills and car loans. So I would rather take the extra energy yep. and go and do that. And you'll do the same thing, Kayla, when you want to purchase a home, you'll do manual underwriting to get your mortgage versus a credit score. Again, it's going to take a level of, of extra paperwork, extra effort, but the extra effort is so much worth it when you are free and you don't owe anyone anything. I know, that's right. I'm proud of you, Kayla, for doing this, mm-hmm. man. You cut up the credit cards. Like, you're in it. You're doing it. You're doing a great job. That's the thing I said I wasn't going to do either. But uh, I was like, <laughs> okay, my way doesn't work. So let's That's just- right. Just try it. Because here's the deal. We always say, too. If you do this for six months, you get out of debt and you hate being debt free. It'll be there waiting for you. Can, you can go You can go right back in. It's, it's way easier to go into debt than it is to get out. So, yeah, there's always your chance if that's what you want. But I'm telling you, Kayla, once you taste that freedom, you're, you're not going to want to go back. Man, she's doing a great job. But she brings up a really interesting point because, you know, with with when it comes to apartments, you know, it, that is the thing people think, man, like, how am I going to get out of this? But one thing I would say for anybody listening, if you're renting, even if you're renting, like even if you're living with your parents, right, but you're paying rent to them, keep record of that. Yeah. Like actually write them a check or do like a, a transfer, something that you can keep record of, because when you are ready to move That's out, whether it be into your own home or into an apartment, they want to see a history that you've been paying rent. And I think a lot of times I'm Kayla wasn't living with her parents, but a lot of times when people are living with their parents, it's kind of lackadaisical. It's like, Oh, you know, my mom, you know, I give her some money here or there, but it's really important to keep record of that because some, at some point you are going to want to yeah, move out. It's a great point. And you need to have record of that. So yeah, we have actually a fine print episode, episode seven of the podcast, the fine print. It's the dirty truth behind your credit score. And George Campbell walks you through every, scenario yes about when you need a credit score 
and how you can get around it without a credit score. So make sure to check out that episode again of The Fine Print, episode seven. Very that, good. That'll be helpful. That'll be very helpful. I remember that episode. So folks, if you listen to The Ramsey Show, we're on five days a week, all the time on podcasts. You can come on any day and there's probably going to be episodes on there, new episodes. Can you share it? If this show has helped you in any way, consider sharing the show with somebody, go on to YouTube, like the show, leave a positive review. But let me tell you something. Don't, don't be leaving any negative comment comments. No, I've you have seen, nothing nice to say. Don't say anything. That's, that's what mama said. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Cause I've seen some of you in the comments. Don't think I don't see it. I, you know, I, it's so funny to me. And again, if that's what you guys want to do, whatever, but <laughs> it's a free I, country. I, I just don't, I don't think unless I bought a product and it was just crap and I'm like, I yeah. need other people to know sure. not to buy this because it's a scam or whatever the thing is. Like it doesn't look like the picture or whatever, <laughs> but like on people's podcasts or even their Instagram picture, like, yeah, it's just so fun. I'm like, I just can't. I would never. I just don't, I just can't. I, I don't even, I don't even have the energy. Like I see something I don't like and I just kind of keep going. I'm yeah. like, I got kids screaming. I have work. To, like I have things to do. I, I don't have the energy to sit there, Jade. I know. And press the comment button and, and, and type. And write a whole and, thing. And write a thing. I don't know. I just don't. It's just funny to me. I don't know why. I don't know why. Look, but I, somebody told me that my, my sweater looked like Fruity Pebbles. <laughs> One, someone said it's a, a guilty as charged question for yeah. our Smart Money Happy Hour podcast. And uh -huh. I got a direct message. And she said, I don't have a guilty as charged question, but you are guilty of wearing the ugliest sweater Ooh. I've ever seen. Ooh. And I was like, oh, well, sorry, Ashley. <laughs> Ashley from Idaho. Sorry. I like wow. my sweater. Oh, yeah. That's what she said to me. I was like, geez. That we was need to direct. collect that, all that, of that. these and do a segment on them. We should do a segment of all the mean comments. All the mean comments we get. James, my favorite and, and honestly, I should probably go on there and say thank you. My favorite comment was from last week. Somebody said Jade Warshaw has the biggest lips of all the personalities. And you said, that's right. I was like, that's right. And this ain't injections. People you know what I'm saying? To have Jade Warshaw. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but this is all we're saying. Come on there. Leave a comment. Tell people how much you love the show. That's right. How much it's helped you. Share it with a neighbor because the, honestly, what we're sharing on here is life changing. People are transforming forming their entire lives because of these principles. I'm one of these people. Rachel, I know you're one of these people. This this show, the content that we're talking about, guys, it is powerful, powerful stuff. Like, share, subscribe. We would really appreciate it. It doesn't cost you a thing. This is The Ramsey Show. to the Ramsey show. I'm Jade Warshaw joined by Rachel Cruz. And as always, we're taking calls about your life, whatever's going on in your life, your money. It could be something like taxes because it's tax season. And I know that a lot of you are like, oh my gosh, this time of year, it's so stressful. It does not need to feel like that. A lot of you have questions about taxes. We totally get that. Taxes are confusing. Can we just admit that right now, Rachel? That oh, taxes? it's so, ugh. So to help you get a better- I'm, I'm not great at it. Oh. I gave it to Winston and then we go get help. And I'm like, I, I don't want to deal with it. Yes. It stresses me out. And that is the correct stance to take, Rachel Cruz. <laughs> that, that is correct. <laughs> so to help you get a better a better handle on them, let us, let us unpack a couple of questions from our listeners because this is- Stuff that we all deal about, deal with. So one listener says, I'm so confused about the child tax credit this year. Yeah. Why haven't I gotten mine from last year? All right. A lot of people are asking that question. And here's the deal. Here's what's up with the child tax credit. During COVID, the government made changes to it. And that kind of affected the way we viewed it, right? We thought, oh, this is normal. But that wasn't normal. That was just because of COVID. So during COVID, this 
tax credit already existed, but they increased the amount that they yes, were you giving. Got a lot more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're seeing like, uh, you know, depending on how many kids you had, that much money was going, you know, into your account. So parents got half of that money up front in monthly installments. Do you guys remember that? We were all getting, you know, however many kids you got. Some people were getting $600. Some people were getting, you know, $900, mm-hmm. that sort of deal. And people got used to that money, Rachel. Yes. And yes. then the policies changed and things went back to normal and that money went away. So the other half was given when you filed your taxes, which is the normal way. Um, And this change expired because state of emergency was over. So that change expired December, 2021. So that means we're now back to business as usual. It didn't go away. It just means that you can claim the child tax credit, which is $2,000 per qualifying child under age 17 when you file your taxes. You're not getting it ahead of time in installments. They're just adding it to your taxes like they used to. So for more tips uh, and software that can help you file with confidence, go ahead and head to RamseySolutions.com slash smart tax. Ramsey Smart Tax will guide you through uh, the online process with low upfront pricing and Rachel, no hidden fees. I love that. Yeah. Again, RamseySolutions.com slash smart tax. If you have any questions about it, We're here for you, and we're here taking your questions today about your life, your money. Give us a call. The call, uh, the number is 888-825-5225. We are here to answer your questions. So let's take a call now. We're going to go to Benjamin in Detroit. What's going on, Benjamin? What's going on? Hey, Jade? Yeah. Rachel? Hey, it's a pleasure to get to talk to you all. Thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. Thanks for calling in. How can we help? Oh, uh, and, and I, well, I'm calling because, um, well, you know, my wife and I, we're on Baby Step 3B. All we've, right. Um, we've, uh, you know, within two years, we got out about, you know, just over 65000 in debt. You know, we're super excited about not owing anyone. It's been good. Um, Congrats. But the question has been, uh, we, we've... We've uh, discussed it a couple of times before and trying to figure out, like, guidelines for merging our our, our health insurance. Like, we've merged our finances, but mm-hmm. health insurance is, uh, you know, it's another item and, you know, we're both paying for it. But I'm yeah. um, just curious, like, what are the thoughts and what are the, um, the directions or guidelines sure. for merging health insurance and is it? Is it absolutely necessary, like the finances? Yeah, no, it is not. You want to find the cheapest option. And so, in fact, how we, in our house, Benjamin, my husband has his own. He's on his own policy. And Mm -hmm. it's cheaper for me to have just the kids, just the way that the policies work uh, versus us doing a big family plan. It's actually cheaper for Winston to be on his Mm -hmm. own. Uh, So, no, the idea of merging money when it comes to getting married is an idea of unity and oneness. But... With health insurance specifically, I would say just to have the best deal. So Absolutely. look at different plans. Um, if your wife works, if you work, if you're getting it through an employer, both pull up and say, hey, okay, is it cheaper to have an individual plan here and then a family plan there? Or is it cheaper to do the whole family plan together? Uh, so yeah, I would look to see what is, what's the what's the cheapest for you guys with the coverage that you guys want. Do you get health, do both of you get health as a benefit through your work or are you self-employed? Um, we, we both get a benefit through work. And, uh, you know, the paperwork is so wild and hard to yes, read. Like, it who's is. the person that can really talk through that? <laughs> well, usually your HR, HR. yeah, you're, the HR of the company, you should be able to sit down and, and mm-hmm. look at the different plans and get a really, um, I mean, what I would do, because they're in that stuff day in and day out. I know our HR mm-hmm. department, man, they, they are looking they're at great. stuff constantly. And so yep. uh, I would even say, Benjamin, to just tell your HR director, like, hey, listen, I, this is a lot. And I need this like dumbed down. Like that's yes. what I would say. Give me the fifth mm. grade level of all right. the different options. Cause you're going to have option A, B, C, right. or, you know, whatever it is, uh, get that, have your wife do the same and y'all just sit down one night and say, okay, let's just price this out. You know, if, what would it look like, um, for the kids to be on mine over here? What's the family plan there? What's the family plan at her work? What's the individual plan at her work? And, you know, and you can kind of just piece it together, mm-hmm. but you're going to want all that information and ask them to do it. Not just to print off an 80 page, pamphlet right. or something you know for you ask them to go through it and help yes. you understand yeah. it that's right yeah mm. but it's a that's a great great question that is a great question does that give you the answer that you need oh that definitely gives me the answer I, you know i'll definitely keep going back and listening over again and um yeah we have to get together and talk about it i good, love it good good well congratulations it. on paying off sixty five thousand dollars of debt that's super duper 
excited. That's right. And today's question, Jade, it comes from Rick in Iowa. I am new to the program, so I have a quick dumb question. There are no, <laughs> there are no dumb That's questions, right. That's Jade. Right. Uh, mentally, <laughs> mentally, I want to keep maxing out my 401k and my 457. I think it's against your steps, but I don't want to miss out on a year of doing this. If I stop for a year and pay off my debt, I will lose a lot of investing and maybe a little tax benefit. Everyone's situation is different, but I'm not sure what to do. Thanks for your advice. So we definitely still, Rick, would recommend pausing while you have yes. debts. And if you miss out for a year, you're going to be okay. You're going to be fine. Because you're going to have money. You're going to have money. Yep. And you're going to be able to invest more. And this is how it works. Yeah. When people are focused, especially when it comes to baby step two and paying off debt, the more focused and planned you are and every part, every ounce of your income that you have yep. to go to this debt and you are... It is, it's an intense focus. Yeah. It does something. And when you say, hey, I'm going to pause this thing over here that I really want, let that be a level of motivation to be like, I want to keep investing. So like, I'm going to pay this off as quickly as possible. Exactly. So I can get to that. Exactly. Most people, they can't wait to start investing. Let that fuel your fire to go even quickly, even more quickly yep. through getting getting your debt paid off, getting three to six months saved up. Because here's the thing, the baby steps work when you work them and they work when you work them in order. And what happens all the time, I see it all the time, people get excited because they're they're looking at TikTok, they're looking at Instagram <laughs> and they're seeing all these videos about compound interest and investing and they get hyped up, which you should. Right, like right, investing right. is exciting. However, if you start investing too soon, you don't have an emergency fund and you've got a bunch of debt, Murphy comes. That's right. Something's going to happen. And then people take out money out of their 401k oh. or they or they take yep. a loan against it. And then it just ends up being a, a terrible mess. 401k loans. I mean, mm -mm. we're seeing more and more of them yep. now. And it's like if you would just work the baby steps in order. And the thing is, here's the thing. Most people are not investing 15 percent right now. Like right. They're, they're investing three or up five to the match. Up to the match. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like if you work the baby steps, when you get to baby step four, you're investing 15 percent. That's a that's a pretty that's more than we give to the Lord's house. OK, <laughs> 10 percent is the tithe. And here we are giving 15 percent. That's excellent. Yep. That's so much money. You are going to more than make up for it. Yes. You're going to be just fine. It's better to walk the steps in order than to not. You know, and then it's like next thing you know, you're taking out a 401k loan for Beyonce tickets. That's right. Oh, you have you I'm seen saying? that girl? Have I seen it? I I got some articles sent to me and I was like, what? What is happening? Oh, 401k loans People for queen b for queen b it's for still queen not worth b. it it's and still not worth it a 10 percent penalty and they're having to pay income taxes no on that 401k no. loan Whew. someone took um took a uh took equity out of their house no. got a loan off their house for taylor swift tickets i no. heard that one too yep oh don't do it. Oh, Lord, don't have do mercy it. on the soul. There's no such thing as Just a dumb YouTube. question. Just go to YouTube and watch music videos. No such thing as a this? dumb question, but, that, but that? dumb things. It's a little What's single, that? single ladies. Oh, that's the single Full ladies? Single. <laughs> don't do it. Do not do it. This is The Ramsey Show. The Ramsey Show and live in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt free stage. We've got Michael. What's going on, Michael? How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. Where are you from? Uh, I was born in Chatsworth, Georgia, and I work in Duluth, Georgia right now. Awesome. Awesome. So you're obviously here to do your debt free scream. How much debt have you paid off? Uh, almost $30,000, whoop, whoop. Uh, nice. dollars How long did it take you? Two years and three months. Nice. Right on point. And what was your range of, like, what were you making during that time when you did it? The range is pretty big. So when I started, um, I was a long-term sub, and I made about $100 a day. Mm -hmm. So, and then I went part-time. So I started at about $17,000 and did some side gigs and 
got it up to about 21,000. Whoop, whoop. Uh, and I think I made close to 54,000 this past year. Nice. nice. Just climbing and climbing and climbing. Very, very cool. So what happened to kind of get you, what got your juices flowing that said, I got to get this debt paid off? Well, once I started working, um, I was getting money to keep teaching. Teachers were getting a lot of money, money to not quit, basically. Brian Kemp was giving us some money, uh, and there was COVID relief funds. And I thought it would be a great gift to my parents, uh, who are here with me today, to pay off my car. My mom was making the car payment every month, and I just thought it would be a kind gesture, if anything. And then uh, someone said something about this debt snowball thing and this Dave Ramsey show, and I listened to it. And in the first hour, I, I realized I had $22,000 more to go, plus the credit card debt. Um, and I was like, it would be great to start off the rest of my career and my life debt-free, everything in the positive, to have a positive net worth. So that was the goal. Wow. So you had, you said car, car, no, car note debt, credit card debt. Was there anything else rolled into that 30K? Yes. $22,500 of student loans. Uh, yes. Oh, Sally of May. Of course. Mm. I know. It's assumed now, you know? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, amazing job. Okay. So what were the things that you did? to help you get out of debt? Because there's other Michaels listening right now and they're thinking, Absolutely. man, his story, this is, this is me. Where do I even begin? What do I do? What were the things that really got you progress quickly? Uh, the budget, using the every, the every dollar app every day. Um, and I found j- just by keeping track of it, you make better decisions. Mm. Um, and I was a thousand to two thousand dollars every month to the student loans for two years, and that was a little wow. over fifty percent of my income. Mm. Wow! Having two roommates certainly helps. Having my my parents help, um, it was a lot. But you know, to buy a five dollar coffee from Starbucks is one thing, but to then have to go home, open up the app, and type into the computer, I spent five dollars <laughs> on a coffee. Yes. You're less likely to do that yeah. every day. So for sure, keeping the budget was the biggest thing. For I me. mean, and you really for two years paying off thirty thousand, and with that income, I mean, you really shrank your lifestyle, and you upped your income obviously through that process. But I'm like that that math that you really sacrificed in those two years. Yeah. Did it feel like it? What was it? Was it hard? Yeah, the, the biggest thing I had to give up was eating out the coffee um, and Legos. I'm a big Legos, Legos guy. I haven't bought Legos <laughs> in two years. And it seems like. And they're expensive. Like, yes, especially as soon as I started, Lego was coming out with six, seven, eight hundred dollar Lego sets. I just wow. wanted so bad. Um, but I, I had to stop. So. So there, was it worth it? Was it the thing that you love the most? Was it worth it to sacrifice temporarily? Absolutely. Absolutely. And now if I had room for it, I don't have room for all those Lego sets, but I could certainly do that. But now I'm working on the emergency fund. So yes, I'll keep putting it off for a few more years. That's so great. So your parents are sitting over here uh, in the lobby. I'm assuming they're your parents. Yes, ma'am. Uh, how, how, I'm sure they're very proud, very, very proud of you. So were they some of your big cheerleaders in this time or who else was kind of cheering you on through this journey? They were certainly my biggest cheerleaders uh, and my biggest financial help. Um, you know, college costs a lot more than $22,000 and, yeah. and they helped me cover a lot of it. So we mm. only took out that much. Um, and like I said, my mom was trying to pay on my car and at the beginning of this. My other cheerleaders were my, my fabulous coworkers in the fine arts department. They were always asking me how much is left, how much did I pay this month? Oh, that's great. What did I do with that Christmas bonus? Oh, wow. Built-in <laughs> accountability. Yes. Um, so certainly them. Those, those are my big cheerleaders, my coworkers and my family. I love it. Love it. Love it. So we know the Legos, like that was a big sacrifice. What was, but emotionally, like what was the hardest part of this journey? Cause you ran it two years. I mean, that's nothing to sneeze yeah. at two years. What was the hardest part? Like what was the part that every day it was like, okay, like I just got to keep doing X, Y, Z. There, there was a point looking forward to like the five and 10 thousands really got me through it because I paid off the car, I paid off the credit card, and then I got to 20,000, and then it seemed like forever, like no progress was being made. I would pay thousands of dollars and still owed 17. Mm. And then one day I was under 10, and it was like the home stretch. Wow. Um, so that was what really got me through, but it, it just felt like forever, those two years, especially right in the middle. Yeah, so how, did it, how does it feel now, standing on that stage, and it's all paid off, the $20,000 mountain has been climbed and conquered by you. 
and now you sit on this side with no payments. How does it feel? It like freedom. Mm. It's I could go anywhere in the world. I could save up. I could buy a new car and, or not a new car, a used car, uh, <laughs> just by saving up, you know, a thousand dollars a month for the next two years. I could get a really nice car if yeah. I wanted. So, you know, being 24, almost 25 now and, and looking at everything with, with opportunity, that's the best feeling. Oh, I yeah. love that. Yeah. The and world is your oyster. I know. And Absolutely. what's so exciting for you is that we see people on the stage a lot and then we, we walk with them through their whole journey. And it's so many of them, one of the biggest things they say is, I wish I had done this earlier. Yes. And so what is so great about your story, honestly, is your age, your stage of life. And you're like, I'm going to clean this up now when I'm young. Yep. And that way, I mean, the, the wealth you're going to build, the investing you're going to be able to do, the generosity that's going to flow from you and your life, that is a beautiful, beautiful legacy. And so it's just, it's incredible, incredible to see it because I know it's hard and I know people probably made fun of you and you're thinking, oh mm. God, this is, I want to enjoy life and I'm here sacrificing. But those two years give you the next 20, 40 years of that's your right. life. Mm. How to, old are you, Michael? That freedom. I'm 24. Ooh. 24. 24. Yeah. I cannot wait. You're going to be back on that stage. Baby steps millionaire. Man, we are so, so, so proud of you. Well, we've got the live and give box for you. That's your chance to gift, you know, everything you've learned, you know, everything that's brought you to this point, you can gift it to somebody else. It includes total money makeover, uh, baby steps, millionaires, and a year of FPU. So you can gift that to somebody else. But without further ado, are you ready for this? We've got Michael. He is here and he is doing his debt-free scream. He's He's paid off 30K in almost two years, making 17K to 54K. Are you ready to count it down? Yes. All right, let's hear your debt-free scream. Three, two, one. I'm debt-free! Yeah. Oh, my goodness gracious. So great. That's what it's about, Rachel. That is what it's about. This guy was willing to sacrifice to win. He took the, he, he heard the message and he applied it. And you know what? And, and it's and it's everyday people that are doing this. It's everyday people. And they just decide yes. to make a change. Yes. And the other thing that we see consistently is that they believe they can. Yes. So those of you out there that you're overwhelmed, you feel like the news is yelling at you about inflation mm. and job reports, there's fear, you don't know what's going on, you feel out of control. I'm telling you, there is a system, a plan that anyone can do, yes. regardless of your income, regardless of your debt level. That's right. The timeline may be different and will be different for every single mm -hmm. one of you out there. But Michael is living proof. That's right. That you can one day decide, I'm done. That's right. Financial Peace University, that is the plan. If you can get enrolled in Financial Peace University, as a matter of fact, I'm doing a class. You're coordinating, right? I'm coordinating. It starts March 1st. Even if you don't, look, I love if you signed up for my class, but even if you don't, Please get hooked up with financial peace. I was talking to a girl online just before the segment and she was like, oh, I, don't, I just don't know if I want to commit. Commit, because if you commit, you could end up like Michael on stage in just a short period of time declaring that you're debt free. Amen. It is worth the time. It's worth the effort. Getting out of debt, guys, you can change your life. We believe you can do it. Now it's time for you to believe you can do it and get signed up to make that change today. This is The Ramsey Show. Listening to the Ramsey Show. I'm Jade Warshaw, your host, joined this hour by Rachel Cruz, and we're taking calls about your life and your money. The, the number is easy. It's triple eight eight two five five two two five, and we've got our scripture and quote of the day. Oh, I love this one. For we, we have brought nothing into the world, so we cannot take anything out of it either. Mm -hmm. 
Ooh, that's poignant. I love that one. And Priscilla Schreier. Ooh, Ooh I, I love, love her. Priscilla. Me too. Yes. Contentment is the equilibrium between the enjoyment of life now and the anticipation of what is to come. Oh, that's good. Ooh, that is good. That is good. I love Priscilla. She's got some good stuff. Oh. She is good. And her brother, Anthony Evans. Woo. Yes. Such a great singer. All right, guys, this week in the Ramsey newsletter, we are going to be exploring 10 things that people do to be successful in retirement. I'm interested in that. Daydreaming about retirement is one thing, but actually getting to live those dreams takes very careful planning. We'll lay out the steps for a great retirement so you can make your golden years your best years. Simply sign up for free at RamseySolutions.com slash newsletter to subscribe to our Sunday newsletter to get the full list. I am really loving this company newsletter because it's different. Like, yes, there's always good content, too. such good content. You never know what's going to be in there, but I can guarantee you this. It will be helpful. So with that, let's go to the phone lines. We've got a caller calling in. This is Christine from Seattle, Washington. How can we help you today, Christine? Hi, ladies. I'm so excited to talk to you. Hello. We're excited to talk to you, too. So um, I have a question. Um, I'm in BS2 right now, mm -hmm. and my husband wants to have bariatric surgery, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, I've had it as well. It's been life-changing. But with the, in our, my insurance will cover most of it. I'm not worried about that part. My husband does construction, so part of the post-op recovery is not lifting a lot. Mm -hmm. And so it'll be about six weeks for recovery for him. So during that six weeks, when we won't be getting a paycheck okay. from him. So what's the best way to save for that when that time comes? Because it's usually about a six-month process to go meet the criteria for insurance to cover it. So we have some time yeah. to save. But how do I uh, save for that? How do we save for that while paying off debt? I think that in this case, well, first off, is his doctor suggesting that he have this surgery? Or is it just kind of elective? The doc. The doc, doc. is suggesting it. Okay. In that case, I would pause baby step two. I would pause baby step two and I would stack up all the cash yeah. that you need to get this done because you're you're going to have the deductible, most likely. You're going to have the loss of income because of the recovery time. And in this case, it's kind of like one of those mini, it's just a few things that we would pause the baby steps for, but this qualifies as one of them, like yes. major health situations. So I would pause them. Do you know how much it's all going to cost? Um, my insurance will cover like most, like it's like 60 ish. Okay. And my husband or my insurance will cover like most of it. Like I had to pay 2,500. So it wasn't that bad, but you have to pay for also for all like the mental health evaluation, all the nutritional classes, all that stuff. So how much, how much is all of that? Christine? How much is all that? Do you know? Mm, Ballpark? Uh, like five, two to 3,000. Okay. Maybe. It, is that including your deductible are you going to hit your deduct deductible on this i yeah yeah okay. yeah i'll hit it before then okay and then um have you guys do you know your expenses week to week of of how much it costs for you guys to to live off of that you're yeah. gonna need yeah okay so it'll be like like 3500 3500 total okay perfect 30, yeah and okay. how much are you guys make like what do you bring in now per month um about five. Okay. So this is going to cost then, you. Go ahead. Well, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I was going to say, so from what you said, the surgery um, itself is 35. Did I get 3,500 from that? And then 2,500 a week that it's costing? I just uh, want to make 50, sure. 5,500 5, for all the oh. surgery stuff, 3,500. Ah, okay. So yeah, about nine, yeah. yeah, about nine grand that you guys are going to need out of pockets to make sure you cover all the, yeah, the medical stuff and to live off of. Yeah. Because what I would say too, mm -hmm. Christina, since you guys are on baby step two, I would look at your budget and say, okay, what are necessities? Yes. And if there's things that you can cut in that time to limit that 9,000, like that, mm -hmm. that 3,500, because I want you to still be paying on your debt snowball. Since you guys have six months to save for this, mm -hmm. um, that's plenty of time to save for this and still be working your debt snowball. So we want you to pause it to make sure you have that cash in the bank. But then I want you to continue to work the debt snowball um, because I don't want you guys mm -hmm. to lose momentum if it's going to be another six to eight months. Because how much debt do you guys have? Um, 
with school loans, I have about 15000 And then um, in cars, we have a truck and a, a car of thirty. Okay, so I have a question for you. Since you've already had the surgery, you're healthy and well, is there a way that you guys can also increase your income during this time? Because you said it's going to be about a six month span that you have to go through, you know, all the red tape before the surgery even happens. So that's it. Yeah, yeah. So there's an opportunity of time there. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, My husband, uh, construction, he picks up side jobs on the weekends and Mm -hmm. then I do... um, contract nursing contract work okay great. Um, how much do you guys make a year uh like 90 90 okay so yeah i mean then there's your plan the plan is to increase your income as much as you can during the six months and pause the baby steps stack up that money there's going to be extra you're not all the money that you stack up is not going to go on to this medical debt and as soon as everything's over you're in the clear throw whatever's left onto the baby steps and resume the debt snowball how does that sound? Does okay. that sound like it's going to work for you, Christine? Yeah, yeah, it sounds perfect. I just wasn't sure like where to place it. Yeah, in I the almost. I don't know, Jay. What, what would you, you know think? What of, I mean? Yeah. Okay. What would you, What would you think about this? What if they saved the nine thousand that they need, mm-hmm. put it in a separate savings account, and mm-hmm. then they just kept on with the debt snowball? I like that. Are you nervous medically? Something's going to happen, I'm and they need about some. That. They yeah. need some more cushion because of a major surgery. I'm a little bit nervous about it. Um, I just want to double check. Your deductible is only twenty five hundred. Is that what you said? I just want to make sure that you have enough. No, I no, no. So my deductible is three thousand. OK, but I'll I'll meet that before the, even the surgery hits because of like other medical stuff. OK, is already. So I'll meet my deductible through other, for other medical stuff by uh-huh. like July and then, then everything will be covered. OK, OK. And then I what I have to pay that. out of pocket. Be, like for what I for my surgery was two thousand five hundred bucks. I just feel like whenever there's a recovery, there's that projected time where it's like it'll most likely be this much time. But you never know. Like some people, it takes them a little bit longer. Yeah. So I would just be very concerned. Like I would shoot a little bit past it. Yeah. So that there's extra. I do think that because you're still working and because you guys have a nice income, there is the ability to do both at the same time. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely get the $9,000 saved. I think you can keep going. I think this is one of those things that once you have the money there and you realize how quickly you have it, it's like, well, we're just sitting like we may as well put this money on debt. Mm -hmm. I don't think that you have to be paused for a full six months, if that makes sense. I agree with that. Do you know what I mean? So hopefully that helps out, Christine. I think that you guys are in a really great spot. You're thinking through this Mm -hmm. on all the in all the right ways. Just pile up as much money as you can. And maybe you sell the thirty thousand dollar car, get Ooh. out of the car loan, and that that re- <laughs> and that relieves a lot. That relieves that a lot. does relieve a lot. It. Yeah, I, I like that I'm idea. What's the car worth? Uh, Twenty. Girl, it might be worth know. it. It might be worth and it. Y'all could be out of debt going into the surgery with money saved. I know. Oh, yes. an emergency fund. I mean, like that would. If feel y'all great. really just just did it, Christine, you could. And and if y'all are gonna be making more than ninety, that's right. You're gonna be doing some side hustles and stuff. That's right. It's I like that idea. It's the, it's the challenge we're giving you, Christine. It is the challenge. But make sure you have to to Jade's point though, you know, a big life change is happening. That's kind of mm-hmm. been the theme I feel like of this show. Yes. To have that cushion because I don't want you going into medical debt because you don't have any cash. So you know something is coming, save up, be conservative, above and beyond maybe the 9,000 just to play it safe. I would. And then start attacking this debt and kind of get it out. Like have this crazy goal. What if we were debt free by the time the surgery came? (laughs) And look, anything is possible. If they get rid of that car, a lot is possible. And speaking of that, that does it for today's show. Be sure to join us the next time, guys. And remember this, when it comes to changing your life and your money, Y'all can tell me that you won't do it, but please, please, please do not tell me that you can't. All things are possible. With God on your side, you can do this. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jade. Look, if you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.